Hi, I'm Peg Coover from ESU 10, and welcome to Grow with EdTech Tips and Tools, episode 27. We're going to talk about blended learning pra best practices today. Previously, we talked about classroom culture and student identity, interests, and agency. Today's topic is differentiation. And differentiation is a best practice for blended learning because of that small group instruction that we strive for when we're creating those learning opportunities for our students. And those small, the small group instruction is differentiated based on student needs. And when a student's not in a small group with a teacher, those tasks that the teacher assigns are also differentiated based on student needs. And in a typical station rotation, we might see groups such as this, teacher-led, online independent, and collaboration. But within each of those groups, we'll have different students, and the, the task can be differentiated, and the instruction that happens in that teacher-led group could also be differentiated based on the student's needs. This teacher had an interesting way of grouping her students. She um, listed the students out first, and then she assigned whatever group they were going to be in, collaboration, technology, or direct teaching. And then she would just move those bubbles around when it was time to rotate. And here's another class, so different students. And you can see that she doesn't have the same number of students in each group. Based on students' needs, she grouped them accordingly. Teachers can provide content using different tools. They can use playlists, hyperdocs. They can use tools such as Symbaloo or BlendSpace that um, provide links for students to access materials. And they could use their learning management system, Schoology or Google Classroom, to also differentiate which students or which groups of students get what content. Teachers can use a variety of techniques to assess student progress toward learning goals. And if they utilize technology tools, these tools can save time. They can provide immediate feedback. They can collect that data in a very visual way and give teachers a lot of information about the instruction in her class. And then teachers can provide opportunities for students to also reflect on their own data. And in this case, it can be pretty informal with sticky notes. The students that needed help self-assessed and put their names up there. The student was reflecting on his or her, her um, factors and multiples. She's been working on IXL and they're reflecting on how they're doing and what they're going to do if they don't get there. And there's another example of, again, students self-assessing and reflecting on their learning and the data that they're getting from their assessments. And then teachers, importantly, should use that data to inform their instruction. If you're going to give the assessment, collect the data, then use that data to figure out, you know, if you need to tweak something, if you need to do some targeted instruction or intervention with students, or if they're ready to move on. A teacher that might use a flex model, um, it could look something like this, where the teacher starts with a whole group lesson, maybe assesses, and then from there, um, pulls some students aside for target instruction or intervention, um, while the others move on with their flexible playlist. And that flexible playlist um, is a, a handy way for teachers to provide opportunities for students to progress through that content at their own pace and without having to wait for the teacher before they can move on. So I hope you enjoyed our third installment of Blended Learning Best Practices. Uh, we'll see you next week. Don't forget you can access our slides for all of our EdTech tips and tools in the description in our YouTube link. Have a great day.